What's going on everyone? I'm Matt from Universal Audio and welcome back to part three of our series on the Opal Morphing Synthesizer. Now, if you're new to Opal, definitely make sure to go back and check out the first two videos. In the first video, we covered the preset browser and how to customize presets using the macros, the filters, and the effects. And in the second video, we walk through Opal's panels to learn what all the main controls do and what impact they have on Opal's sound. In this video, we're gonna go deep on modulation. We're gonna talk about the LFOs and the multi-segment generators and how to assign these to different parameters via the modulation matrix. Let's dive in and check it out. So as promised, we're gonna talk about the modulation matrix in a second here, but first let's take a look at some of the pre-mapped modulation options in Opal. You'll notice on oscillator one, there's this FM knob. This controls the amount of frequency modulation from oscillator two to oscillator one. And it's a really cool way to thicken up the sound and add some cool harmonics. Let's turn down the volume of oscillator two and hear what effect this has on oscillator one. Now you can control the amount of frequency modulation with this FM knob down here or with the FM slider in the oscillator page. Now up in the oscillator page, there's also an AM slider, which controls the amount of amplitude modulation from oscillator three to oscillator two. I'm gonna turn down the volume of oscillator one, turn up the volume of oscillator two, and then change the tuning of oscillator three a bit just to make this effect more noticeable. Let's hear what that sounds like. Now back in the oscillator panel, we also have this sync knob, which gives you a variable amount of hard sync on oscillator two. Now, if you're familiar with what hard sync is, you know this setup usually takes an additional oscillator. But what's really cool about Opal is oscillator two has its own internal sync source. So you can get those classic hard sync sounds without tying up an additional oscillator. Let's hear what that sounds like. You can also modulate this sync knob with something like the auxiliary envelope to get that classic hard sync sweep. So now let's check out some of the pre-mapped modulation options for the filters. First off, the filter section has a dedicated filter envelope that can modulate the cutoff frequency of either filter with the amount of modulation controlled by the envelope amount knob. Up in the filter page, you can also modulate the cutoff frequency of either filter with velocity, so the filter opens up more the harder you play, or you can modulate the cutoff with LFO2 for instant wobbly sounds. Let's hear what that sounds like. Now, since the cutoff frequency of the filter is being modulated by LFO2, we can change the speed of that modulation using the rate two knob in the LFO section. All right, so that covers the pre-mapped modulation options in Opal. Now let's check out Opal's modulators, which includes the LFOs and the multi-segment generators. We'll take a look at the LFOs first. So first I'm gonna click the label at the top of the LFO section to open the LFO page where I can see all the parameters for the LFOs. There's the standard controls that you might expect like rate, as well as the ability to sync the LFO rate to your DAW's tempo, as well as a trigger dropdown, which controls whether the LFO is free running or triggered by note on messages or one of the other modulators. Now at the bottom of the LFO page, we have the morphing controls, which lets you change the shape of the LFOs. Each LFO can be triangle, sine wave, or square wave, and every shape in between. Next to the shape knob is the tilt knob, which lets you tilt the shape either left or right to give you any shape that you could want as well as a random knob, which adds a variable degree of randomness to the LFO. Now also on the LFO page, we have the dual source sample and hold circuit. I'm not gonna go too into depth into what this does in this video, but it's a really cool way to add complex modulations and even do generative patches in Opal. Now let's move on and check out the multi-segment generators. These are function generators that go far beyond the standard ADSR envelopes and LFOs to give you complex multi-stage modulations. One really cool use for the multi-segs is to use them as a pseudo arpeggiator by controlling oscillator pitch. Let's take a look at how you might set that up. First, I'm gonna load the acid sequence preset from the template menu. Then I'm gonna click over into our modulation matrix using the matrix button in the top right corner of the plugin GUI. This is where we can set up our custom modulations in Opal. Now you see there's already a blank row added, but if I needed to add another row, I can use the plus sign in the top left corner. Now let's set up some modulation using the multi-seg. First, I need to set the source, which in this case is gonna be multi-seg one. Next to the source, there's a mount slider, which controls the depth of the modulation from the source. In this case, I want it to be full modulation, so I'm gonna set this to 100. I can also offset the amount of modulation, as well as modulate it via another modulator, such as velocity. But in this case, I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna leave the amount set to zero. Finally, I can set the destination for the modulation. In this case, I wanna select oscillator one pitch, so that the multi-seg generator is controlling the pitch of oscillator one. Now I have oscillator one and oscillator two turned on right now, and I want that multi-segment generator to control the pitch of both oscillators. 
So I'll use this second line to set up another modulation for multi-sig one with the amount set to 100. But this time I'll set the destination to oscillator two pitch. Now back on the multi-sig page, we can see that these steps are now gonna control the pitch of oscillator one and oscillator two. Let's hear what that sounds like. So just like that, we've set up an arpeggio by using multi-sig one to control the pitch of both oscillators. Now in the multi-sig window, there's two different sections. At the bottom of the window, we have the steps, which are actually controlling the pitch of either oscillator in this scenario. But at the top of the window, we can see the gate signals. Now each multi-segment generator can send modulation data as well as gate signals to trigger things like LFOs, envelopes, and more. In this case, I wanna use the gate signals that the multi-segment generator is sending to trigger an envelope to create an articulated note at each gate signal. I can do that by coming into the filter envelope and clicking the label at the top, and then changing the gate source to multi-seg one. Now every time multi-seg one sends a gate signal, it's gonna open the filter and create an articulated note. Now to make this obvious, I'll crank down the cutoff of filter one, and I'll turn the envelope amount knob all the way up. Let's hear what that sounds like. Now each time multi-seg one sends a gate signal, it opens the filter and creates an articulated note. So that gives us a really cool arpeggio effect. Now back on the multi-seg page, let's take a look at how we can edit this sequence. There's two different ways that we can manage each step in the multi-segment sequence. There are the segment controls, which lets you step through each step in the sequence. And then you can use the knobs to control the parameters of each step. You can change their level, their length, add some curve, and change the length of the gate signal. Now you can also change any of these parameters by coming into the display, clicking, and dragging. And you can also create new segments anywhere in the display by double clicking. Now, in addition to the segment controls, we also have some main controls, like a speed knob that controls the speed at which Opal steps through the sequence, a sync button, which turns on tempo sync, and a loop button, which controls whether the sequence places a one shot or a loop. And there's also a trigger dropdown that controls how the multi-segment generator is triggered. If you wanna access the second multi-segment generator, click the two to the left of the display. So that's one example of how we can use the multi-segment generators and the modulation matrix to set up some really cool modulations in Opal. So let's take a look at some other modulation options that we can set up with Opal. This time I wanna use the LFO as the modulator, so I'll set the source to LFO1. Then I'll set the amount to about 50. Now I'll leave the offset set to zero again, and let's talk about this mod via menu real quick. This lets you control the depth of the modulation via another source. For example, let's say I want to use macro one to control the depth of the modulation coming from LFO one. I can select macro one from this mod via menu and set the amount to 100%. Now this macro one knob is going to fully control the depth of the modulation coming from LFO one. Now finally, let's set our modulation destination. In this case, I think it could be cool to modulate the shape of oscillator one using the LFO. So let's set that up by selecting oscillator one shape from the destination menu. Now I also wanna use LFO one to control the shape of oscillator two as well. And you can actually use one modulator to control multiple parameters. So I'm gonna click the plus sign to add another line. And again, I'll set the source to LFO one. I'll set the amount to around 50 again. I'll leave the offset to zero. And again, I'll set the mod via menu to macro one and set the amount to 100 but this time I'll set the destination to oscillator two shape. Now LFO one is modulating the shape of both oscillator one and oscillator two at the same time with the depth being controlled by macro one. So let's click back over to the oscillator page here and you'll notice that there's no modulation happening yet, which is because we set the macro one knob to control the depth of the modulation from LFO one. Now let's turn up that macro one knob and see where that gets us. Macro one is now fully controlling the depth of the modulation from LFO one. If I want full modulation, I can set it to 100%, or if I want to scale it back a bit, I can turn that value down. Let's hear what that sounds like. So now Opal is modulating the shape of both oscillator one and oscillator two at the speed set by LFO one. And I can change that speed using the rate one knob down here in the LFO panel. Now let's go back to the modulation matrix page and see what else we can set up. Now, I think it would be cool to also morph the filters at the same time that I'm morphing the oscillators. So let's add another line here. I'll set the source to LFO one again. I'll set the amount about the same. I'll set the mod via menu to macro one and turn the amount up. But this time I'll set the destination to the filter one mode. Now, as you can see, as soon as I do that, LFO one starts modulating the shape of filter one. Now let's turn down the cutoff of filter one and see what that sounds like.
So that's one example of how we can use the modulation matrix in Opal to set up some custom modulations and add some really cool movement to our patches. Now that we've set this up, let's say this is a custom preset. I can do that by clicking the default label in the top left corner to open the preset browser again, and then clicking save and giving my preset a name. Once I hit save as, the preset will now show up in the preset browser under user presets. From here, it's time to get hands-on. Load up some presets, reverse engineer them to see how they work, and before you know it, you'll be making your own killer sounds in no time. I'm Matt from Universal Audio. This is the Opal Morphing Synthesizer. Make sure you subscribe to the Universal Audio YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our future videos, and I'll see you next time.